Okay, and the next speaker um, is um, uh, Nina Brander. Okay. <laughs> Uh, she's MCC PhD researcher. Uh, Nina Smolander is a senior lecturer in Tampere University of Applicate Exchange. She's also project manager in the DG Care project and work, works Heno Nurse, Smart Nurse, and a specialist in several international projects. She's actively involved in grant application writing, e.g., Erasmus Plus, Coast, MC, MSCA. And the research area in research mm -hmm. ethics and longitudinal health intervention impact including genomics. Welcome, Nina. Thank you. And thank you for inviting us here. So like we have heard yesterday by Kathy and Jackie, and today by Aria, the genomics is a huge and very complex issue at the moment. And we do know that we it's a long way, like Arya said, when we reached the education to a level where it can be seen as a fundamental part of our nursing education. So Profitu project Arya mentioned was sort of a starting point in our university. And with the very successful results, we thought that we have to do something else in order to develop our own competency and learn more and collaborate with the international uh, networks. And <clears throat> when you think about genomic informed nursing care, you could ask like why and where can nurses need it? And by no means this figure here or this picture is complete. It's just a brainstorming of few issues coming to in my mind within five, five minutes. And if you can see anything related to your own topics, what you are teaching or, or your career in the hospital, you know that something of this has something related into the genomics. And there's way more than this. Like biobanks are missing, RDI is missing, research is missing from this picture. And there are laws and there are ethical dilemmas and so on and so on. So you can easily see that it's really all around us somewhere, one way or another. But when we look at the curriculas around, curricula around the Europe, you can hardly see it um, anywhere. You can see bits and pieces of genetics, but then nothing more. So we thought, all right, let's try to do something. And we have to admit that like Arya said, it's difficult to get it through even in our university. And uh, it's been difficult to get genomic informed nursing care penetrated into the European universities. So we decided let's try to do together something about the issue. So we applied Erasmus Plus funding and um, we got it for Geno Nurse project. We started this year in February and it's a three year project and it's a cooperative partnership project for higher educations and we are the project coordinator and like said before you really need to network you need to get to know people and uh, and introduce yourself and like Arya said the way she was networking and connecting to Kathy and Emma and this is the way the whole whole work really started and um, our team at the moment is our coordinator for this project is our university. Then we have our partners from Italy, University of L'Aquila, and then we have University of Ljubljana, and we have one, one of our members here as well as from Slovenia. And then last but not never the least, we have our partners from Ireland, University College Cork. And as said, it's really important to know the people and the brave enough to connect with people. So let me introduce some of our, our teams. Oh, there are pictures missing here. So this is our team, Aria is our project manager, and we have a free project specialist, and then we have also finance officer to support our work, as well as a RDI um, support. 
and our team from Glana is Maria, who is presenting up uh, today as well, and Tina Kamensek, and I'm sure they will include other members also. And our team from Italy, the Italian project manager is Professor uh, Lancia, and uh, his team is over here. And also they are extending the work into a PhD researchers and they are doing PhDs. And that can be um, collaborated with the General Nurse Project. And the team from Ireland includes Joseph. So it's been Hecate as an Irish project manager and their specialists. It's magical world, isn't it? Harry Potter is, <laughs> is joining us as well. So any of us, you can easily just connect or, or contact us and we are happy to share information with you. So our main objectives really, what we wanted to do or what we want to do in the future is to design and develop a general nurse model for higher education. Something which could be used by any of the university or bits and pieces of the model could be integrated in, in different curriculum. And this project is really for education, training of the trainers, so training the teachers and, and different level educators, and also providing students, healthcare students, not only nursing students, but also the others, information about genetics and genomics. And expanding also the influence to healthcare professionals and different representatives of our associated partners. And those can be patient organizations or biobanks or other collaborative bodies, which can be included in the work. And it's really important to get the national partners. Like Arya say, said, that it is a new issue in many of the countries. And when you get nursing organizations, when you get research institutes and biobanks interested, you also have some sustainability ground, not only in your educational environment, but also elsewhere in your region and elsewhere in your, your community. So in terms of um, uh, exposure, it's really important. And in terms of uh, sustainability of the results, this makes a huge, huge, huge issue. And we are also, we do want to enhance and improve the collaboration among different participants and different networks. And this means that we are very happy to come and present wherever we can, because this is one way to connect, one way to meet people, one way to chat and, and exchange ideas as well as exchange exchange knowledge. And as Arya mentioned, G2NA is one of our collaborators. So this is something we want to want to do work with them and International Society of Nurses in Genomics ISON as well. And any other suitable relevant collaborative bodies are more than welcome to join, join our future community. As I mentioned, we have a three years project period and the structure of what we're going to do to design and develop the general nurse model is always based on the, the research findings and the literature review where we are, we are screening the best practices and researches relevant to our topic. And that's sort of our first milestone in this project. And um, then we're going to start designing pilots whatever the model, whatever the content needs to be piloted in a real environment in education institutions so that teachers can uh, provide feedback, the students can provide feedback, what we can use for refining the content. So after each pilot, we will collect different types of feedback, whether it's a, by questionnaires, whether it's a discussion groups, whether it's a feedback form of how they felt, the um, pilots and this information we're going to use to improve both our model but also to integrate the model into the curriculum and as Arya mentioned it's really difficult to have like a 
huge program or several independent courses of genomics in the beginning, at least, we believe. So our idea is that whatever is in our model, even though it's a, supposed to be a comprehensive and general model, it can be integrated in different uh, courses. So you don't have to have a specific curriculum in your university to be able to use it, but you can take parts of the model and integrate into your existing educational structure. And um, our main outputs will be generalness model and roadmap. And like in any project, whether it's EU or, or national, quality assurance is a huge thing. It needs to be done throughout the project, as well as dissemination and exploitation, and of course, managing the, the work uh, fluently. And um, since the first pilot, we do measure the impact of the implementation, whatever we are doing. And at the end of the project, we will publish a channelless ebook and also the generous community will be established. This work will happen already in the beginning of the project, but we hope that we can attract people and schools and interested parties into the community to exchange knowledge and share their experiences. So what are we expecting? You had a view already what we are going to do. So Slovenian uh, University of Ljubljana, they are leading the first project result um, group. And the idea of this Erasmus Plus project is that even though one of the universities are leading, we are all actively participating. So one is the main facilitator or, or leader, but we are all involved. So that's, I think, the beauty of the international collaboration that you get so many different points of views, you get different experiences, you can get different methodologies intervened into the activities and that you always learn, you always give and take. And um, <clears throat> the generalness model should contain, will contain objectives, learning objectives of genomic nursing, skills and knowledge, what should be included, both for genomic nursing and at some point also for counseling of patients. We are focusing on nurses in general, not as a genetic counselors. And when you look, when you had a look at the picture in the very beginning, it's something each nurse is involved at some point of their careers. So it's not only for a specific focus group, but the nurses in general. We are also screening about best teaching and training practices for learning genomic nursing and what kind of digital tools can be used to have the highest impact or the, or the impact uh, needed. And one aim is that the model will really encourage the implementation of these skills and knowledge and competency in a real life in environment, in a clinical practice. And um, already has been mentioned, these are sensitive issues, these are difficult issues, they might have stigmatizing uh, aspects involved, and they have the family relation, there are many complexities around genomics. So the concept of communication and concept of delivering and supporting and supporting the decision making is also one huge area of this work. So this is also included into the model. And we are expecting that the general nurse will be piloted in, at least in 12 different courses or, or part of the general nurse model. And minimum of 40 nursing teachers will be trained to use the model. And um, this means basically that 10 teachers from each partner university will be exposed to the general nurse model. It might sound a little bit low, but then like you heard from Maria and the previous and Jackie and Kathy yesterday, it's difficult to get it through. It's difficult to, to sort of like justify to the teachers that what should they leave out and what can be taken in. 
you you know what I mean like that you have your idea of running your course in a certain way and then somebody comes and say no you have to have the genomics integrated here as well so how do you balance what you what do you take uh, leave out but hopefully we will manage our our goals in terms of indicator information Italy is leading the generous community and our aim is that a general nurse model has been started in five higher education institutions outside of our consortium. And um, we hope that at the end of the project, we have at least 80 members in our general nurse community. And the way we're going to assess is by logins and a number of members and blogs and started discussions, etc. And Ireland is leading the project result three, which is the general nurse roadmap. So this is sort of like a really a roadmap how to implement general nurse model. And this is inclusive of different toolkits and different uh, questionnaires and different examples, how to best implement and use our model. And this can be introduced in a project website and in open access platforms like Ecale is one of the EU's open access platform. And um, the main thing here is when it's about EU projects, that whatever we produce, whatever the outcomes and outputs are, they must be open for everybody's use. So you are more than welcome to use them with me when we get them completed. And we will be organizing different trainings and webinars, which are also open to all public. And TAMP will be leading project result four, which is about impact of implementation, including publications in impact factor journals, national professional journals, and general publications. So as much exposed as we can, pro we can uh, achieve, the better I think we also achieve our goals. We have social media channels which we are using. And uh, as you know, these are hard work as well. So we, we try to be active so that you can find us in, in uh, LinkedIn and Twitter. And of course the conference presentations among other dissemination activities. So we, are, we have been planning different activities and many of the activities we're gonna organize are really open for all, whether online or in person. And um, at the point, moment we are in the development phase of the Chenonos model and we are conducting the literature review. So each, each of the partner universities will conduct at least one literature review and the topics are, are written here. And the work will continue so that we are describing the learning methods for best practices and, and to learn, learn knowledges and skills needed. And of course, defining the learning goals, what are we aiming for? What, what does the teachers or the students should know when they have, they have used our materials? And we had a, first transnational meeting in Ljubljana in September. And um, at the moment it looks, our model looks like this. So um, the leading <laughs> institution made us to bake bread using only the very, very critical basic ingredients, nothing else. What are the basic ingredients? And we kept on thinking, what do we need to bake a bread? And there's a direct association to our model. What are the, the very basic aspects, what should be in our model, to really let us think about those first before we start adding, adding stuff to make focaccios and, and, and really nice twists and, and puns. And um, even though we have already baked the very first 
bread rolls. I think our dough is still rising and never know what kind of a bread it will be, but I'm sure it will be very tasty. But this is how it feels at the moment. And, and, and like you know, sometimes your bread is a little bit different than the other day. And this is the designing process of any model you have you have kind of like a roller coaster moments, and then finally you will reach the conclusion or a synthesis of all the participants. So, when we have the model and we have the content and we have the methods and the means how to do that, we will start piloting our model. We will first start piloting a segments of the model before piloting the whole model itself. So each partner university will do their own pilots. We will be collecting feedback, analyzing them and refining the model based on what we receive from the participants. We will organize at least two webinars. We will have ethical discussion webinar and then we have a genetic and genomic case study webinar. And these are all online, so anybody interested can join them and, and start learning more. And I, I'm sure we all learn a lot when we attend. And the last general nurse model meeting should be in Italy, in L'Aquila, in November 2023. So that's our deadline for the model, so all the work should be done before that, or the evaluation, refining should be then completed. And for the work package five about the dissemination and quality assurance, we're collecting quality assurance data throughout the project, and the general nurse community will be established, and anybody can. Anybody interested can join that, and the general nurse roadmap will be published at the end of the project. And um, like already mentioned, the dissemination will be done through a variety of different activities, easy low threshold activities, and then national teacher training seminars will be organized so that we can support even more the local training of trainers and that situation. This is fundamental, like you have heard in many of the other presentations already. So thank you. I purposefully added a very small picture, but welcome to join our channel nurse webinars. Welcome to join the channel nurse community and exchange your experiences and exchange your share your knowledge and learn with us and we do also have a web page and it's a little bit dark at the bottom it's in the early phases so we will keep on updating our channel's website of all the activities and results and and outputs we're gonna do so thank you and welcome Okay, anyone has questions here or in the online? Oh, okay. Thank you, Nina. I have a question. When you show the, all the project between 2022 until 2024, you have different pilots. Do you finish the first pilot? Or not yet? No, not yet. No, not yet. We are still designing the model. We are still conducting the literature reviews. And those results must be first before we start, um, before we reach the conclusion on, on synthesis enough so that we can have content in our, our model. So I assume having been involved in in few model designing processes that it will it will take some time and we will have different drafts so 
we don't have to wait until the final draft of the model to start piloting, but we must have at least the first draft and what is including and what, what do we pilot about that first draft. And when you do the first or the second pilot between this pilot, do, do you analyze that? Yeah. And if you need to change, you change it for the next yeah. pilot? Yes. Yes, that's correct. So we are trying to collect as multiform data as uh, feedback and, and data as we can, so that we really get also the experiences and, and the sort of like an participants feelings about that, what we have done. And then we will use that either to refine or add or remove or modify the content or the way we are teaching as well. So the method methodology is also really important here, like what kind of tools and what kind of uh, pedagogical methods we're gonna use to achieve the impact we are aiming for. And the last one. <laughs> <laughs> and when you do that, the pilot is in the same, in, in all the countries or at the same time or in different times? Well, each, for the first or the second pilot. Yeah. Each country will do all the pilots, all the pilot rounds, mm -hmm. and they can be done a little bit different. I mean, the schedule might be a bit different depending on their uh, suitable relevant courses they can use for piloting. So that's basically living a little bit, so the schedule. But of course, before we start the next phase, then we should have completed all the pilots by all four universities in order to collect and analyze the analyze the um, the feedback. Otherwise, we cannot use it for the next one. Thank you. And do you have the receipts of the bread? Sorry. The, the receipt of the bread? Do you have? It? Oh, the sample <laughs> of the bread. No, can, sorry, we ate it. We ate it all. <laughs> Thank you. No more questions. Hi, Nina. Hi. Thank you for your presentation. It's Estella from Manresa. And uh, so you said you are designing the actually the, the model um, with your experience, which um, are the, the main topics at, the, at this point um, of the model. What do you think? I think there are a lot of the similar competence issues what we have heard yesterday by Kathy and Jackie and what Aria mentioned. Mm -hmm. But then we, we have to think that um, those methodologies, how to do that, we have to have an idea of what can we do online as well, because it's really at the, at the moment, it's something which needs to be included. And um, I think the ethical aspects will be really emphasized also in that model. Those are, those are at least, and the understanding of everybody who is using it, that it's not a um, independent topic taken outside of, of something else, but it is already present in many, many of different uh, relations, like we heard yesterday about the pain management and of, uh, of Kathy's, Kathy's father. And there are so many things that I think nurses are sort of aware of that, but they don't connect them in the genomics so that we could we could increase or we could increase the 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 knowledge in a way that people would start being interested about the genomics and reading about that and 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 understanding that it is already here that they are not separated from that so basically those topics will be included, but I don't have like a list of yeah. list of competencies. I know C2NA is preparing those competencies and MI is hard at work with that. So, and we're not gonna invent a wheel again, like we've heard in many of times. So we are gonna use the, the materials and, and the knowledge and the work already done, so. But still, we, we think that 
uh, there are different starting points in different universities. If you have some content of genomics, you still must be able to use the model. So it must have a different types of content, which can be used for different levels of teachers or different levels of, of students so that everybody can get something out of that. Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't give you the bullet finalist. Sorry, I lost a, a question. <laughs> <laughs> and this analysis is uh, international uh, research. And do you have any problem between all the countries about ethic uh, items? Because sometimes the, the rules of each yeah. country are so different for the, to do that, the right, the, the project. Do you have any ethic problem about this in this country can change the, the rules or the, the items from other country or every country have their own uh, rules or yeah. items? Oh, that's a very good question, by the way. And we still have to work within the legislation of, of different nations, but we haven't really hit our heads together too badly in terms of ethics yet, at least not. I think we all, all share the similar ethics around, around the subject and, and the more you learn and more you can discuss with others, also your own perspective will, will be better or enhanced. So not yet, at least. Thank you. Yeah. Someone else? I just want to reflect what you said about the, the ethics. Uh, and I think the those webinars we are when we are discussing about ethical issues in different countries and different perspective will be really crucial for us. Mm. And uh, we also look at the legislation and in, in Europe we have some kind of consensus of, of, of legislation, but there are a lot of uh, national legislation that we have to explore more. But mm. I think we will uh, have some kind of summary in our ebook about that. So we are now looking the right person who will write about that. And and we hope we will be collaborating through potentially through cost or the other project in the in the future. And this is the work we have started. So we are not. It's one piece of the huge puzzle which are still ongoing. continue with the ethics problems <laughs> for me it's so important and in the project you have differences with ethics or not or rules but when you go to the country for example for Slovenia or Finland the UK or other country that each the, the governments have also some problems about ethics because generals use mm. sensible data no? mm. and the, the government say, okay, it's an international uh, research, but when they use the pilot or then the government do this, not this, yes, yes, or, or do you have these problems when you propose the, the, the project to, I don't know, the government or the, the university? So, so far not, and like, like Arya said, the ethical webinar we're gonna have, I think that's gonna either reveal or resolve a lot of a lot of issues partners have faced during the pilots or so. But we are also have to be, uh, how can I say? We have to be practical or and um, realistic in a way how we design the pilots so that they can be done in different different universities. So if we do and, and design the pilots in a way that they're gonna rock the boat from the very beginning, maybe then we should step back and think that, okay, what kind of a topics and how we will do that. We are not gonna, our aim is not to have a fight in different 
in four different <laughs> government and, and legislation. So not that, but I understand you're very, and it is something of an ongoing matter, I think, in many of the countries that what can be done and, and uh, whether you can be screened or not and who will get the information and, and how much you can give and how much you can influence uh, the decision and, and so on. So these are difficult matters too. But we are not, um, we are not piloting, at least at the moment, we, we think that we will not be piloting in clinical field because this is more for the educational environment. And I think that alone will will reduce the chances of, of crossing the line and being in a, in a position where you really have to start negotiating uh, regulations or, or laws. Thank you. So, so just building on um, Danny's question, do, you, do each of your universities have to go through ethical approval, sort of RIB? to do the studies or do you have one ethics approval say from from Tampere that covers all four universities <laughs> I, I wish but I, <laughs> I think we are not that lucky I, I think, think Aria, is, Aria is the best person to answer this but let's give it to Aria uh in Finland we don't have to have ethical approval for this kind of uh, assessment when we are doing the development work and I, I think we have to discuss uh if we get the publications uh, sometimes the journal would like to that we would apply, uh, but I think we don't have, and I think Slovenia is the same, that because this is not that kind of research that is uh, have, have to have ethics. Of course, we will have an ethical aspect taking care in account, so mm -hmm. we ask informed consent and we explain all the all the issues that has to done, but not ethics. Um, I'm a chair of our ethics committee, so <laughs> I'm not going to take this one in our committee because uh, because of, because of our legislation, it's it's unnecessary. Yeah. We have to have uh, taken care of ethics other way than asking permission from ethics committee. Hi, maybe I can add something. <clears throat> Um, uh, for example, for my uh, university, if they uh, agree with the project participation, that's agree with the research and involvement the students and piloting and such stuff, it's easy solved. So if the dean approved the projects, it's everything solved for me. Uh, this is one point. Another, I heard if somebody um, get the permission of ethical permission in European Union, that's... Uh, solved for every participants in the project so you don't need to uh, ask for ethical committee to approve the research also in my country it's a, just enough one okay yeah it's the depend of the uh, the research what kind of ethical approval do you need but uh, anyway uh, if you get it in one country it's enough So um, thank you very much, Nina, for your presentation. Um, I have a, one question about the real world, uh, the practic, uh, clinical practice. Um, in Spain, they, there are not uh, many uh, nurse work in this uh, genomic area. In, fi in Finland, there are um, many nurses uh, work in this uh, genomic areas. Well, if you think that genomics is in everywhere in uh, everywhere in different uh, in different specialities, almost all of the nurses are working with the patients at some level related to the genomics. Whether it's a pediatrics, whether it's a rare diseases they have, whether it's some development delays, whether it's ophthalmology, whether it's the cardiac unit, diabetes, whether it's the cerebrovascular unit, they are all all at some, uh, some level related to genomics. So basically we don't have a, a, a place where it's genomics only, but it is everywhere. It's, it's, it's sort of like a fork landing on, on every little, every speciality. 
And then when you think about this, these are like, we mentioned that we are focusing on nurses in general, wherever they work. Then it's a different story if your job is a uh, genomic counselor. Then you are counselling and you have a different training for that. You're counselling patients maybe with rare diseases when they are expecting their baby and they have taken samples and they are revealing some uh, inherited diseases which needs to be counselled and supported for, for decision making, what they're going to do. That's a, a different side. We are not concentrating on this so much, but we are concentrating on what all of the nurses, nurses should know. And like um, Arya mentioned, direct-to-consumer tests, they are everywhere already. And what do people do with the information they receive those tests? Who do they turn to and who can help them and, and advise them and, and how the nurses can refer patients further, whether they recognize that this might be something genetic or there's some genomics behind a symptoms which are not really traditional related to the condition patient should have. So it's kind of like a comprehensive knowledge and understanding of genomics in, in genomics overall. That's what we are aiming for. Okay. Thank you. On um, um, this is the last question. Yes. No. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> the time is up. <laughs> I, I think my I think my ten minutes is long gone. <laughs> uh, one other question: To build the general model, you use teachers or trainers or what kind of people or, or invent it? I don't know. We are <laughs> or using. Use, or, or, we are or using. Try, or ask to other countries like UK that they use these models. What so, is that process? Because if for me, it's now isn't so new. Well, it's it's very hazy to most of us <laughs> at the best of times. But the consortium is building the oh. the model. So those who are members of our consortium, but it doesn't mean that we don't get to consult people and and discuss about what should be in a model and and utilize the information already collected and and uh, drafted in different other networks so it's it is a difficult it's a very difficult question because everybody's asking how do you design a model well it's difficult it's a process it's a progressive process and uh, we have a idea what should be involved but then it will progress and it will get refined the more information we receive and more information we receive from uh, from uh, teachers and students. And it's not gonna be like the ultimate truth or anything. It's just one suggestion of what kind of topics and methods and, and so on could be integrated into a healthcare education. Thank you. I finished now. <laughs>